Hey guys, it's King of Darts of King, and welcome back to another unboxing video. Today I'm... Alright, fine, I'll make the heavy video. First for the minigun is the Titan CS50. The Titan CS50 is as close as you can get to the minigun from Team Fortress 2. It's full auto, and it has a 50-round drum magazine. So you can just hold the trigger down and spray darts everywhere. It is amazing. It looks and feels like you're playing heavy in real life. Honestly, I would recommend it. It's a bit pricey, uh, but it's worth it. Okay, guys, just try it. Trust me, you won't regret it. Second on this list is the X-Shot Crusher. The X-Shot Crusher is a bit of a downgrade from the Titan. The X-Shot Crusher isn't compatible with magazines, and it's not full auto, it's actually a springer. The carry handle up top is actually the priming handle, but the good thing about it is that it has slam fire, so you can get a high rate of fire with this if you want. I don't exactly have a reason to get this over the Titan CS50. It, it seems like a downgrade to me, but if you see this in stores, go for it, man. Last for the minigun is the Vulcan. If you're the kind of person who has like a million whistler darts, this is perfect for you. It can either function as a springer, or it can function in full auto. It doesn't resemble the minigun from Team Fortress 2 at all, everyone always says it does, but compared to the first two on this list, it doesn't. But it's still definitely great. I, I think everyone should at least try using a Vulcan at some point. Seriously, it's got the cool tripod thing on the bottom so you can set it down. Heavy never does that in-game with Sasha slash the minigun, but you could do it. It might make it a bit easier if you don't like carrying it by the handle up top. You'll just look awesome charging in the battle holding a Vulcan. First for the shotgun is the Busby monorail. The Busby monorail is really weird. It holds six elite darts inside, but every time you pump back the grip, it is moving a conveyor belt that is pushing the darts into the chamber. It is really weird. It's unique internally, but it's not the most reliable. I've used this once or twice. I own one of these. I didn't own this when I mentioned it in the soldier video. I've owned one of these, and it works a good 60% of the time. Second for the shotgun is the rival takedown. The Rival Takedown is a Rival Shotgun that holds 8 Rival Rounds. It's probably the best thing on this entire list for Heavy, honestly. It's so good. But what isn't good is the third thing on this list, which is the Dark Zone Liberator. It's absolute garbage. I, a, lot of, a lot of people really like this one. Okay, if you're on a budget, I can understand that. But once you start getting more, more shotguns, you're gonna notice, hey, this one isn't that good. First for the family business is the Spring Thunder. The Spring Thunder is a 3D printed shotgun that uses shells. It can fire different things depending on what type of shells you use. It can fire mega darts, it can fire three, uh, I, think, I think three rival rounds using different shells. Also, you can customize the colors and the stock piece, if, if that interests you if you want to make it look more or less like the family business. It's a really good shotgun. Even though it's like $195. Not everyone's willing to spend that, I can understand that. If you're wanting to get something just as cool, but way cheaper, they can still use different types of shells, then I would say get the Trilogy. Which is the second and final on the list for the family business. You can get different 3D printed shells, if you take out the air restrictors in the trilogy, and you can use it to fire different types of ammo, same as you can with the Spring Thunder. The trilogy is weird. It's a pump-action shotgun, so you think it would be able to fire multiple shots, but it only holds one shell at a time. So you fire it, you pull the slide back, and the shell gets ejected out, and then you put in another shell, and then you move the slide forward, and then you fire. It's interesting to use. It doesn't really feel like you're using a shotgun. It feels more like you're using some sort of rocket launcher. As with most melee weapons in this in the game-themed loadout series, they don't make any sense. I, I get that it's like cool to include a melee weapon in a video game, but in an actual Nerf War, 
there's no reason. Okay, if you want, if you have to be the guy who wants to pretend to be heavy from Team Fortress 2, and you want to run around punching people, I guess you could use like those foam hole cans or something if you have to. Something that won't hurt someone's face if you hit them. I, I don't think these are going to be allowed anywhere, so I think you're going to have some trouble. I think you're going to get, like, banned if you do this. I, I don't think I can recommend this. I don't think I can recommend anything regarding fists or boxing gloves in the Nerf world. Okay, so for the sandwich, uh, I... Same thing for the fist slash boxing gloves. I don't know who's going to be eating a sandwich. In Team Fortress 2, there's the health gain that you get from eating a sandwich as heavy, but I... <laughs> there's not any benefit to it. The most realistic uh, comparison I can come up with this, come up with for the sandwich, would be uh, bringing a couple bottles of water with you. That might be nice to hand out and drink, I, I guess. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I put a bit more effort into this video, that's why I took a bit longer, even though you wouldn't be able to tell that I put effort into this video. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I worked way harder than it looks like I did on this video. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go unbox this now, okay?